Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen Camille Trent. Today we're going to go into the old impressionistic kind of style with watercolor today with a little bit of gouache. Um, this is just a fun little yarrow field, yarrow field, uh, based off a photograph I have. I've just changed the color of the sky a bit. Um, I'm going to go over the step by step, just really just kind of washing in paint, tapping in paint, mixing in with some gouache, and using a little masking fluid for the flowers in the front and the background. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And also don't forget to check out my Patreon. It's a place where people can go and support my channel. You can see it right here. Um, I give ad free videos, traceables with YouTube and uh, exclusive tutorials and videos, um, excuse, exclusive tutorials on Thursdays on Patreon. So without further ado, let's get painting. Okay, so I'm going to go over my supplies. I have a 6 inch by 9 inch piece of 100% cotton cold press uh, paper by Arch. Um, I guess I was saying Arch is wrong, Arch wrong all this time. I, was, I thought it was supposed to be Arches, but it's Arch. Um, so, Arch or Arch. <laughs> However you want to say it. Um, my palette, my paints, my water jars, my paper towel. Um, I'm going to be using uh, masking fluid. You don't have to use masking fluid if you don't want to. Um, I suggest maybe if you're going to do this kind of tutorial, maybe have some like yellow gouache with some white gouache close by so you can make like a nice pale yellow flower. But we're going to use this uh, PBO masking fluid. This is really cheap. I have a link for it in my description box from Amazon. Um, I just take a cheap old brush. Let me just grab a little cheap old brush here. You're just going to grab like a really kind of worn out old watercolor brush that you have, you know, like, and we're going to make these uh, yellow flowers kind of bigger on the front and tinier in the back. So in the back, we're gonna, here's, I just kind of sketch it like maybe I'll have a tree here, but you know, when I'm painting it, we'll see. So I'll have little ones going back here, just like these little splotches like this. See like that? Just making these two tiny little splotches. As you get closer and closer, they'll get a little bit bigger, see, and even bigger still. Just like this. And see how I'm going to just painting it like this, just tap, 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 tap. So like I said, tiny ones in the back. I wouldn't put them everywhere. We want it to have a nice pretty field, but we don't want this like crazy field full of flowers that just seems kind of ridiculous in my opinion. So I did like little taps you see here and then little teeny ones on top. Just picture how you would paint like a really cute loose flower. You do the same thing with the masking fluid. And it helps to have a little brush like this, have control. And, oops, that one's a little too big. So you see I'm just sporadically putting them down. I don't want to put them everywhere. I'll put some little ones up in here too. And then little ones back here. So it's this like really pretty flower field. And we're going to paint over this, and when it dries, we'll lift it up, and then we'll paint the yellow right there. Because watercolor, you can't paint light on dark like you can with gouache. So picture how you'd want these little yellow flowers to look. And then just paint the um, masking fluid that way. See? Voila. I know it seems like it has no rhyme and reason, but there we go. So we're going to let this dry and then we're going to start doing a little landscape. Okay, so now that that's dry, we're going to work on the sky first. I want to make like a really pretty, um, like a Monet blue purple kind of sky. Um, so I'm going to be mixing up purples, a little bit of pink. 
So the top half here, I want to have a little pink. I'm going to grab my quinacoderm magenta, right? I'm going to water it down pretty loose. And I have a number 12 Princeton Neptune brush. I'm going to grab a little bit of this yellow, cadmium yellow deep. I'm just going to tone this your pink down a little bit. So it's kind of like this corolly kind of pink. And I'm just going to take the, this paint wet on dry, and I'm just going to loosely just kind of tap that paint in up here. Grab some more water and put this push this paint around. I might grab a little more magenta, a little more pink. Just doing a little pink up the top. Just like that. And now I want to mix them up some purple, bluish tones. So I have magenta here. I'll mix it with some peacock blue. And I'll keep mixing it until I get this nice, pretty bluish purple color. It helps to have like a little piece of scrap to see if your color fits the way you want it to be. So I'm going to add a little more peacock. I don't know if I did 50-50. 50-50 would make a nice purple. And maybe 75-25 to make a nice bluish purple. 75 peacock blue. 25% magenta. So we want these really nice kind of pretty blues. So I got that color. I'm going to water it down a little bit. I'm going to start washing that in. See, it's like a nice purpley blue, more on the blue side. Very loosely painting this. So it's three quarters of the way up from the this paper where you see the flowers. Kind of go down in here. Just like that. And now we're going to get even darker color of this bluish purple. So here we go again with the peacock and magenta. I like the two of these because it's a bright, they're both bright colors and they'll make a really nice bright tone. See? And that's a little bit darker still. I'm going to put this right in here. I might have it come down and up, kind of like indicate mountains. You can kind of tilt your paper this way. If you want to grab some more of this paint, get even darker still. I'm going to grab this paint a little bit darker. Kind of putting some of this nice, pretty blue purple right in here. Just like that. Right? Has this like ombre field. If you didn't want to do it that way, you can also have it kind of just tap it in here like the little clouds. I might even get darker still actually and put some up here. It kind of has an ombre look. I don't know if I necessarily wanted that, so I might go in and lift some of the paint up my brush. You can play around with how you want the sky. See, I'm kind of lifting some paint, putting it over in the pink, leaving some of the pink. You can go back in and add a little more pink. Don't go too crazy though. <laughs> oh, you could go crazy. Why not? It's supposed to be fun. So I'm going to let that dry, and then I'll go in and I'll do another... I don't want it to bleed since it's wet. I go in and do another wash of some darker uh, bluish purple in there as well. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, let's go down here and start putting in some lovely greens. Um, I have my cabin yellow deep. Right here. I'm gonna mix up a fair amount of paint and my Prussian, my peacock blue. 
So I would say it was more uh, yellow than blue, so 75, 25 on this. And I'm going to just wash in this really bright green. Wet on dry. Right over in here. I might add a little more blue now at this point. Right to that green. There's a lot of water here, so I want to kind of remove some of that and get less water. Blue, green. Blue and yellow make that nice pretty green. So now I've got this more medium tone. And I'll kind of wash in some of that into the yellow. Going through here. As we close, get close to the bottom, we'll add more blue tones. So I'll get more peacock here with the yellow. It's a little too bluey aqua, so I might add in a little magenta. See that it gets it turns it kind of gray. Go back in and add the blue and the yellow. Maybe even a little brown. I have Van Dyke brown next to it. It's a little too dark. Grab some yellow. I'm gonna put thing, uh, this across. Grab some more water to move it across. I'm just gonna do this. So it has that ombre kind of feel to it. As it's still wet, we're going to go in and add in some more deeper color. So I can have some Prussian blue right into this green. And maybe a little Van Dyke brown also right onto the paper. Again, the blue and a little yellow. Kind of want it dark, a little Van Dyke brown right up front. You can see how the gradation of the field. With this is still wet, we can go back in and grab some yellow, mix in a little, maybe a little magenta, a little orange, or burnt umber. I'm gonna put some of that out here. Just a little bit, not too much. We got a little cauliflower situation happening here, but it's not a problem because we're gonna go over that with some greens for trees. So I've made that yellow kind of brownish yellow and I'm going to back in and add some peacock. You want this like kind of olivey kind of tone mixed in. And I'm just kind of taking my brush, just kind of tapping it in sporadically here. You see that? Go grab some blue. And same thing here. Just coming across with this darker green. Add a little more of this yellow green in here. Go back and add some more yellow to this. It looks a little too yellow, so I want to add a little more green tones to our field. Just like that. And we want to get it even darker still down here, but we're going to do something different. I'm going to grab some Prussian blue and the yellow. A little magenta with that. Got this one more blue. You get this deep green. You can take the tip of your brush and start going up like this. Making these nice strokes. It might bleed a little bit because of the uh, it's still wet. We want this kind of blended strokes go going upward. I may even grab some more Prussian blue to go in here, just underneath the uh, masking fluid. Just tap in some darker green coming underneath it. 
See that? It will bleed out. Grab some of that red. Just kind of loosely painting this like that. And you start to see how dark it gets and you can see the, where the yellow would be with the masking fluid. We'll just keep playing around with that. Up, out in the field over here, it's still damp. While it's still damp, I'll take our yellow, move all this green here. Still using this brush. Might add some magenta. Look at that like orangey yellow color. I just want to tap in a little bit of that. I don't want it so loose though, so I'm trying to move some of this water here. A little more concentrated. It's going to take little taps, adding a little bit of this orangey yellow. And this area might have dried, so I'm just going to go put some of that in. We're trying to just get a variety of tones going through the little field here. So you can go back in and add some medium greens. We want to keep it fairly light. We want to add some nice, pretty, bright greens. Let's go a little muddy. Some yellow. I'm going to peacock. Here we go. More yellow. 50-50 on that one. Just kind of tapping in some light greens. Kind of like a little play field. You're just playing around, putting in color. That's what I like to do. And if it's still wet, it will bleed nicely like that. Still want to remain mostly yellow. Now here, from the mid part, we'll take that pale green. If you want to get a smaller brush, I may grab my Princeton 8 long round and just kind of make these wispy graspes, graspes, <laughs> grasses. <laughs> I can't speak today. Oh my goodness. See, it's starting to dry. You can do like more of a dry brush effect. Again, the peacock, the yellow. You could throw in a little magenta just to tone it down a little bit. On the dry side, just kind of do these little nice wisps. Because it's wet still, it will bleed it out a little bit, which is great. Let's go back to our blue sky. So I'm going to go back in here, grab our peacock, magenta, get an even deeper purpley balloon. Okay. And we can go back in again and add. This time it's going to be wet on dry again, but not, we're not going to have it bleed. We want, we want those hard edges. So we're just going to go in here and add kind of like a mountain in the back. See? You don't have to worry about the cauliflower mistake. Just went right over that. Why do we call it cauliflower? Because it looks like a cauliflower edge. <laughs> looks like it was a cauliflower. See, I'm just kind of taking my brush. This is the number 12, wiggling it. And we have that nice deeper background. It's still kind of showing the cauliflower edge, but don't worry, we're still going to fix that. So we're going to let that dry. We can take the same blue purple and start putting that in here in the grasses. Mixing again the darker and light. Another trick to make it kind of really cute and impressionistic. I have this Verdier Blue. This color is so pretty from Holbein. Now if you're taking the color, I mean, you know, people who would want to do realistic watercolor will not take color from the tube, but I will take it from the tube. I'm a rebel in that way. So right from the tube, just straight from the tube. Look at that blue. See, I'm just going to throw this in between the grasses. It's that pretty, you know, when you think of Monet and his paintings, it always has that beautiful blue, pink, all those pretty colors. Not all of them, but water lilies, 
whatnot. Just kind of putting that blue all throughout. If you don't have this blue, don't worry about it. Maybe just, you know, take some concentrated cobalt if you have that blue. If you don't have any of those, but you do have white gouache, you can mix your white gouache with the color. So, you know, here, uh, I will show you. This is a crappy part of my palette. White gouache. You ha a lot of people have that because I always tell people I have white gouache. Right? Because it's water. I can take the peacock blue. There it is. And the white gouache. What do you know? <laughs> And then look, look at that really cool, vibrant blue. And guys, you can do that with all the colors. Okay. So you could take that white gouache and mix it with, you know, so we mix up the green. I see yellow, peacock blue. I have a nice green here. Get a nice green going. Grab some yellow. So here we go. We mix the yellow, the green, the blue. And now we have this pretty light green. This is how it goes, guys, with that gouache. It's so versatile. All you need is one tube of white. And you can mix it with your watercolor. And the, the possibilities are endless. I'm going to do some more grasses back here. Of what you can do. So I'm putting more grasses back this way. Just throwing in some. When this dries, we're going to go in and put some trees. All right, guys, as I stood up to check out my painting, I noticed it's very yellow in here. So I just put in a nice light medium tone green wash across it all. So just evened it out. It looks much better that way. So now we're going to take. Uh, I grab my grumbacker. We're gonna take, I'm gonna make some dark green. So I have my, I'm gonna take the Prussian blue, right, and the yellow. Minimal water, a little of the um, magenta. Magenta, here we go. Prussian blue again. It looks a little too muddy. And some more yellow. There we go, nice dark green. So we don't want too much water. We're gonna hold the paintbrush. We're gonna be painting the trees kind of like on our side. So we're gonna be going like this. See, kind of twisting it, taking off some of that water. So you want to have really loose, and as you twist it, see how you mix, you miss some areas? It makes really easy trees. Just kind of twist it like this. And you got a tree. And then here you go again. I twist it. Because it's not so wet and the paper's got that rough texture, you get these dry brush areas that make like perfect little loose trees. And then we're going to put some another one over here where that cauliflower was. See? Didn't even know we had a mistake. You'd never know it. Turning and twisting it. And then I'm going to put some even darker ones. I'm going to grab some more of that Prussian blue, mix it in with that color. Back here. And back here. Actually, I'm going to grab a little more of that blue. Get it even darker still. So you want those to be like in the way background. So you want them to be much darker. Back there. I'm not going to add a little of that blue in the front of this tree here. Just like that. You can get a little bit lighter with the green. I'm going to add some lighter green with the yellow. Take off the excess water here. Kind of on the out edge on this side. See? Like the sun's kind of hitting it. Grab a little more yellow. Okay. 
just like that. Don't worry if your trees kind of look blobby-ish. We can get them, move this paint around again to get them a little more. We don't want them to be perfect round trees. Like that. It helps to stand up, so I'm standing up to see how if I like this or not. Yeah, that looks good. Let's see, you can get those pretty trees in there. Okay, and since it's fairly dry, you could go in and, like I said, when I showed you with the, the white gouache, take some of that white gouache, I'm gonna mix it in with some of my green and yellow. Grab some peacock glue. Oh, you don't want to cooperate today, huh? <laughs> and you can take that and make this little grass go right over those areas because it has gouache in it. I have to grab a smaller brush. That one doesn't want to work. I'll grab my number eight. See, it goes right over there. It can handle the paint. And even grab the gouache again, make it even lighter. See? Woohoo! Crisscross, you know, applesauce. You don't want them to all gonna kinda go the same way. Now I noticed that I stood up I want some darker patches in here. I'll grab some of that yellow and the blues that I have mixed. Get like a nice medium green. Again. And here, or you can take some nice peacock blue itself. Kind of go in here. And you want to mix in some colors. I would even put in some purple tones. So I have that magenta, whatever purple you have. So I'm mixing magenta with my peacock blue, getting those bluish purple tones, and kind of putting those in too. You know, like the impressionist stick, they have multiple colors going all over the place. And there's that Verdier blue, which I love. Kind of putting that in all over here, too. And just kind of, you can throw in like bigger swatches of the color, too. Don't be afraid. It doesn't have to be little, little teeny swatches. You can take that Verdier blue, go right in here. And make like some blue, almost like cornflowers if you want to, in here. See, I'm just tapping that in. And my dog, pay no attention. Making little taps out here. I can't even deal with talking to him because I have to stop everything. It's just making little teeny taps of that birdie blue out here and in here. And around. Grab some concentrated yellow with a little bit of the green that you have here and do the same thing. See, the yellow in here. You don't want too much though because those flowers are gonna be yellow and white from the um, masking fluid. And if you wanna put a little couple of pink ones or like, or like pale purple, bleh, pale purple ones, that could work great too. So you grab the magenta and the peacock. You could take that gouache a little bit. So you get the pale purple now. See the pale purple? And you can just tap that in too. This is how we create like a little watercolor Monet style picture. Da -da -da. Just tapping in this color. It's just a lot of fun. Want to have fun when you're painting. Doesn't have to all be about serious watercolor. I'm putting some purple out here. It's just really pretty and fun. Okay, at this point, we're going to remove the masking fluid. We're going to have to let all that dry and we're going to remove it. All right, now let's dry. I'll take my rubber cement pickup. Uh, they look like little blobs. We'll fix that. 
So that looks great, except that like it just looks like a flat white area. You're gonna have to go in and fix that, right? Like a dandelion field. I mean, it could be dandelion field, it could be yellow, yellow, yarrow field. So you can leave it white if you wanna have like a dandelion field. Um, it was My intention was to make it yellows. Um, like this yarrow, this picture I took of a uh, uh, place we go to walk the dog a lot. It's kind of like a yarrow, but I didn't like the sky. So I wanted to do something more blues and whatnot. So now I'm gonna go in with my yellow. Gonna tap that in here. With my little, I have my prince number eight. So now we're filling that in with a yellow. Because watercolor, can't, like I said, you can't go light over dark. You can with the, oh, bad. I got some paint right on there. That happens to you. Grab your paintbrush, clear it, water right, oh my goodness, right away. Go right on top of that. Take a paper towel and lift up that paint. All right, so I'm going in here. I'm just filling in this yellow. I'm going to have to add some other tones to it so it's not just this one note of these little yellow flowers. You can leave some white ones too, so it's a mixture of both. But I primarily wanted this yellow, 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 yarrow. I can't even speak, say that 10 times fast. <laughs> yellow, yarrow, yellow, yarrow. There we go. You might have said, oh, I like the white better, but that wasn't what I was going for, so. And now I'm gonna take some, like I have a, already have an orange here, but you can make some orange with the yellow and the magenta. And I'll kind of, the darker yellow, kind of just to tap, 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 so it's not this one note yellow. Like I said, I don't want it to be one note. Kind of tap that around. And you can take that orange and kind of put that out in the field too. See like little teeny ones out here. Same thing with the yellow. Little teeny ones. Up by the tree. Teeny weeny. So they look like they're way in the background. Those little yellow, 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 <laughs> yellow, yarrow. Grabbing that concentrated bright, bright yellow. Just tapping it out here. Tap, 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 tap. Da, 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 da. I know, sound effects. And I'll stand up, see how it looks. Oh yeah, look at that crazy yellow field going. Kind of like in this, guys. I like to do real-time tutorials because I want you to experience what I experience when I'm painting. And I'm gonna do some little taps next to the areas that I had left masking fluid so it looks a little more natural than this blob. And I'll put in some greens too. You can take that same yellow and just go down in places here. But I'm gonna grab that peacock blue, mix up that green, and then go in here too. So it doesn't look like this weird blobby. Now the green attached to that should be lighter, so I might grab just a little bit of my gouache. Not too much. Teeny bit. Yellow. Blue. Yellow. Blue. Want a really pale green. These colors are not cooperating with me today. There we go kind of going down the stem here from the yellow yarrow. And you could put little leaves. See, I would just make them really kind of loose. Ooh, it's, my hand is just going like this. Yeah, I think we've achieved our field. 
put some loose ones, put some these. While you do that, you can also just grab some really, really dark, like Prussian blue. This yellow, this dark green, a little magenta. Put in some dark greens next to it too. I'm just gonna keep adding till you feel like, okay, it's done. And how do you know when it's done? When you step back and you look at it and you say, you know what, I'm proud of it. That's when you stop. Some people don't know when to stop. I say, when you step back, you gotta step back from your picture. I'm adding some dark ones up in here too. Just some dark bluish tones. When you step back and you say, you know what, I like it. I like it, looks good, I'm done. And that's what I say about this one. So let's pull off the tape, the reveal. And that actually helps you really immensely when you, when you see the tape pulled off because it has an instant frame and then you can really see if you like the picture or not. And there you go. Look at that yarrow field. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, don't, don't forget to hit the bell notification button to know my tutorial is up. Um, also, don't forget to check out my Patreon where I have exclusive tutorials and ad free videos and traceables over there. Um, it's a place where people who want to support my channel um, can go over there and support my channel and you get an additional bonus content. So I appreciate that. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section, guys. Take care and I will see you soon.